it's quite overwhelming really but I'm so happy to be here I'm so proud of this film and so proud to be a part of it really I feel very lucky I, I, I don't know I don't know I'm hoping that I've gotten somewhere close uh, it's a lot of watching all of her work but I've watched all of her work since I was like five years old Acorn Antiques and Dinner Ladies for me were my childhood so I don't know a lot of homework basically and hoping for the best <laughs> So it was really lovely because um, because of all the things we got to visit in 1979. So obviously Rosie is Donna's uh, best friend, one of her best friends, and she's just always there for her. But one of my favourite bits is that we touch on the Rosie and Bill love story really early on, and I love that setup for the rest of the story. It's lovely. Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia was huge. When I read the script and I read that we would be the ones performing it as the Young Dynamos, it just blew my mind. And I still can't really believe it happened, but it, it did, I think. Astonishing, aren't they? Michelle Clapton's just done the best job, and those little touches from like things that ABBA themselves wore, and then the touches that you know cross over in between 1979 and present day are so beautiful, and they're amazing to wear. I've never felt more empowered. <laughs> it's amazing. The first like 10 minutes of being around them was terrifying but luckily they are all just so lovely and friendly and they they made so I it felt like they made a concerted effort to make sure that we were happy and comfortable and that was so lovely because I mean you don't expect that like one day I walked into rehearsal and James Bond came over and gave me a little cuddle asked how I was doing and weirdest day of my life apart from today. Sophie and Sky are um, well. Sky's off because he's um, he's working, but Sophie is and Sam are living on the island full time, trying to renovate the uh, Belladonna, and they they they're actually about to have this huge grand opening, grand reopening, and it's a big deal for them. Um, and so there's going to be a huge reunion, and that's where we we meet them. She is pregnant, but she doesn't know it yet. So it's all happening for them. Um, it really brings people together. This movie uh, is a musical with ABBA music. It's like impossible to not want to get up and dance and feel liberated. And the fact that you're creating, you have these stories being woven together by this m music that is timeless and infectious. It's it's kind of, it's a it's a hole in one. It's lightning striking, and I hope it strikes twice because it certainly has for me. So. You know, uh, it's a feeling that's hard to describe and some the energy that these kind of things create sometimes. Um, it's a testament, obviously, to the first film and to ABBA's music, that people are so connected with it. And the anticipation that they have for this movie is uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know? Because this movie celebrates life, it celebrates women, it celebrates family, love. I play the uh, the sort of like the general manager of the club, of the hotel. And uh, but within the story, I have a past. If you know the song Fernando, there's a past. And in the lyrics, it, it talks about the past that I had with Cher, which is uh, grandmother to Sophia, and uh, played by Amanda Seyfried, and Meryl's mother and Lily's mother. Now there's, a, there's, there's been some rumor that is it possible that I'm also the grandfather? Oh, it's great. She was, she was, she was great. She's a warm-hearted and such a talent, you know. And we got on so well, very easy going right away. And listen, we have a task at hand, and you kind of just nose to the grindstone, you know, get it done. Well, uh, it's fun. That's all I can say. It is, and the, and the good thing is that it's a good film. You never know. You know, if people knew from the start at the set out of making a film that it would be good, uh, we would never see any bad films. See what I mean? There's so many bad films around, but but you're always trying your best to make it a good film, and sometimes that doesn't happen. But in this case, it did, and this one is at least as good as the first one. 
that's my that's how I feel about it. So yeah, it feels good. Of course I am, but I mean that's just, it has happened gradually, you know. So I mean, like ten years ago, we were up there, and then so it's another ten years. So it's sort of on a curve. I don't know if it's more or less than before, but the fact that the songs are still around and kicking is, is quite amazing, and I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, well, that's that's quite wonderful. Because she was a, she was a star long before we were became stars with Ava. So even, all the way since she did, I got you, baby, with Sonia, with Sonia and Cher. Uh, she's so good. She always was. She's done a lot of good records. She's a great actress too. And uh, yeah, so now it's just amazing. She takes the song, becomes a chair song, not an ABBA song, you know, it's quite amazing. Well, the thing is, the first film has like 22 songs. We couldn't use those for the second one. And all Parker knew this. So we said, you can keep my, but he wanted to keep Dancing Queen and Mamma Mia, uh, Super Trooper for an encore thing. But all the rest is stuff that was not in the first film. So it's sort of, it's music that people, if you're not a hardcore ABBA fan, you haven't heard those songs. And they feel good, you know? They're good enough. They fit perfectly into the story, which Old Parker made it do, or he made the story fit the, the song. Uh, so, yeah, it feels good. I'd say the one I like the most is My Love, My Life, that ends the film, where, where, uh, where uh, Lily James starts off and then Meryl and Amanda Seyfried are singing together. I like that one. I, it, I, it's kind of strange. It all makes me feel, how did this happen? Um, but then I enjoy it very much, and I, I you know, I feel very humble, and uh, it's great. It's so exciting, and the film is so good. I love it. It's it's quite different. It's two stories, a sequel, and a prequel, um, simultaneously and seamlessly working together uh, and it's got you know it's got dark moments it is but it's basically very uplifting and happy we, of course we yes she's a legend and she was an icon for us I mean we came uh, in the middle of the 70s but she was already established then so and we've always loved her she, it's a fantastic voice and she's made such a wonderful version of Fernando. My Love, My Life, uh, the last song is great and Fernando is great. When I Kiss the Teacher, lots of them that, uh, and lots of them that are not that well known that, uh, you know, are in, the, in this movie. They will be better known now, I think. Well, I loved the first movie, and I thought it would be fun to play Meryl's mother. Well, that was that was given to me because of the storyline. It's it for it, it's what happened to Fernando and me a long time ago in Mexico. So it made perfect sense that that was it. It was part of the script. I first of all, I think it's about being free and having fun, and sometimes in this day and age, it's hard to do that, but. You just, it's just fun, you know, it's just fun and you are part of it. You're, they're having fun, we're having fun, and the audience is having fun. I know, can you imagine, it feels like we're in Greece and we're in London. What happened to London? Where's the rainy weather? I'm delighted we're having a, a premiere and it feels like we're on an island. Oh, about three husbands later. Three husbands, ten love affairs later, she's still looking for a husband. I know, even more, I share, even, I, I do almost everything with Julie Walters. Cannot tell you what a privilege it is, she's simply a great lady. And while we were making the movie, she was made a dame. 
So we sang There's Nothing Like a Dame to her the day after she arrived on the set. It was great. I miss Julie. I love her. I love her. Because we had so much fun the first time. It was like, it was like a love affair. It was like summer camp. And, uh, you know, to just, it's a miracle the cast was able to clear its schedule, its collective schedule, to do it again. And I think the sequel is enchanting. I think people in this dark, dark time that we're living through are going to love to escape onto a desert, uh, onto a, a Greek island with all these beautiful performers. And I got to sing, I, of course I got to sing Dancing Queen and Super Trooper, but I got to sing two ABBA songs that I wasn't that familiar with, Angel Eyes and I've Been Waiting For You. And they're both beautiful songs. And I sing them with Julie and Amanda. Because it's optimistic, it's life affirming, it's, it's sexy and sensual. It's like, the, it's like ABBA music, it makes you feel good but it takes you to a place of emotion and depth and the depth of relationships, but it's joyous, it's not cynical, and we're living in very cynical times. So I think it's a gift to the world right now. I love it. I, I, with the, some of the others have been we've, been, we've been exchanging messages about feeling a bit emotional, a bit of nostalgia, you know, so it's, um, it has a, a strong feeling of family reunion about it. I'm not sure, to be honest. I mean, he's been, as in the first film, he was very bored, uh, decided life on a Greek island, you know, um, just letting loose a bit and seeing his daughter was more important than signing a contract at a business meeting. Well, um, it, it seems obvious, but I don't think it is. I mean, when, when, when you're trying to generate fun, uh, you've got to have fun, but that's not that easy to achieve in reality because filming is not a spontaneous process. You repeat a lot, you wait a lot, and. You know, it's a proper day's work, and and I think the secret has been uh, the affection everybody's had for each other and a genuine enthusiasm. And when you have about a hundred people, it's it's quite hard to get a crowd of enthusiastic people together who stay enthusiastic. But all these dancers uh, and the people who sort of, you know, are doing the real work that impresses you all were enthusiastic because they came up to work every day to use their skills love being there and it was just a delightful bunch of people so i think it's it's the fact that it was working on a personal level for us hopefully communicates i feel like we're under a uh, the west way is it the west way is it hammersmith flyover isn't it yeah no hammersmith flyover but I've never seen the Hammersmith flyover being underneath it. It looks so amazing and beautiful. And I'm very excited for everyone to see this, this film. Well, you find that you've, I think in the last film, they go off together into the sunset and go traveling to see, discover the world. And then in this one, sadly, you see what life often does with work and ambition and wanting to further your career. They've both gone on their separate journeys to sort of, um, I suppose, gain, gain experience. And what's lovely is we then have this beautiful duet that then is a kind of realisation of actually all this doesn't mean anything without the person you love. And that's kind of our little bit, Sky and Soph's story in this. I mean, the rest of it's all the, the, back, the history of, their, of, the, of the, the girls, the women and stuff. But. I was given the song One of Us, and when I read the script, I was very pleased with that because I've always loved that song. And it's very poignant in this piece because it's there, the moment that they discover that they want to be together and actually being apart is awful. And um, I, it was actually quite tough to sing. I had the most one of the most wonderful moments ever, in that. Um, but I was I was struggling quite a lot with with singing the song. And you can sometimes you're in a booth and you're in a glass box and you can you're sort of in this dead dead sounding space. And Benny from ABBA came out and just told me to just sing it around the piano. And we just um, and he made it sound really like he made it work. And that was a kind of magical moment to be sitting there because you should see. You can see Abba staring at you as you're sort of massacring one of their beautiful pieces of music. And um, 
he came out and he was really gentle and kind and just helped me work out a way in which to do it live that would make it much more um, appealing in terms of sound. It has been a long road, so I feel very happy that we're finally at the place and time where this is coming out. It's great. Well, we made the first film and, you know, loved the success of it and loved doing it and had such a great time. And Judy and I would get together and over cocktails, you know, kind of talk in giggly ways about maybe doing another one. It seemed impossible, totally daunting. But as years have gone on, the actors and us have, you know, been together and we've talked about things and they've really felt uh, a lot of joy from doing it and, and seem to be open to doing another one if we could figure it out. And Al Parker, our writer and director, figured it out and uh, sent scripts to everybody and everybody said, let's go. Oh, it just works. You know, it's, it's a combination of a prequel and what our cast, the older cast, is doing, you know, now in their lives in Mamma Mia. And that meshing and flashing back and forth seemed to really work. I've been waiting for you. Knowing me, knowing you, uh, those were really the two that I was just so happy. My Love, My Life, you know, they're just, these are just classic, great songs that uh, we were sorry we couldn't use the first time, and they worked so great in this one. They make people happy, you know? I don't think it's anything more than that, you know? And we have a cast who, you know, you want to you wanna go on little adventures with. So I think it's really that. I mean, it's completely bonkers being here tonight. It's uh, it's slightly overwhelming, but really fun. And yeah, I can't wait to, I've seen the film, but I haven't seen it with an audience. It'll be exciting to see how it goes down. So I play a younger version of Harry, which is Colin Firth's character. And the point at which we meet him in the story, he is working in a bank in Paris and he meets uh, Donna, played by Lily James. And he falls very quickly head over heels and realizing he's losing his chance to seduce her, decides to try and seduce her by singing Waterloo to her. Yeah, I was quite nervous. I was very nervous doing the Waterloo sequence. I mean, the hardest part of that was learning the routine, which you know, you, I had to do in a room full of, I mean, tens and tens of professional dancers who could dance much better than me. So it was, uh, yeah, deeply humiliating at moments, but ultimately really, really fun. And the choreographer, Anthony Van Last, is amazing. So it was fun. It's, it's completely surreal being in a room with all of those people because, you know, some of their icons and, yeah, it was, it was very, very strange. And also when, when I was with them without spoiling anything, we were all dressed in, uh, you know, skin tight, glittery, lycra costumes and platform shoes. So we like sort of giant, uh, you know, giant glittery newborn folds, sort of nervous and staggering around, but it was, it was fun. I think, well, I think Mamma Mia 1 was so successful because, I mean, the songs of ABBA are just timeless and iconic and, you know, they sound simple, but actually they're, you know, they're really detailed and, they, you know, they, they sound happy, but a lot of the time there's a lot of melancholy in there and, yeah, I think they're timeless. I mean, it's just so great to be able to finally be able to share this movie with people. You know, it's uh, it was it was a, it took quite a long time to film, and uh, I think we all kind of knew. We sort you sort of get that feeling on set when you think you might be in something that's, that's works, and uh, yeah, it's finally going to be so great to finally watch it with an audience and uh, sort of get that crowd reaction. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, finding out playing young Pierce is a bit daunting. I always thought I should go up to him and sort of apologise to him that I wasn't sort of. I don't know, I think he probably wanted some sort of, sort of Abercrombie and Fitch model or something. But um, no, we kind of, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it, it was daunting, but he was so sort of generous and kind to me that um, by the end of it, we, we all sort of really all felt like friends and it was a really lovely experience, yeah. Um, I mean, Lily, it's heartbreaking working with Lily because she's such a better singer and dancer than you will ever be. So you just know that in comparison, you're just going to look awful. So I was, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say, 
I mean, hugely excited to work with her, but also devastated at the same time that I was going to have to duet with her. Um, but, you know, getting the whole cast together, it, it, it kind of got more and more starry as it went on. Just when you think, um, just when you think it's, uh, you know, a bigger star couldn't come on, Cher comes in the room and you're just like, oh, my word, like, you know, how can this get better? But, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, the, the, the thing that they've really done in this film, which I think people will be sort of interested, surprised by, is that uh, Benny and Bjorn from ABBA, they've really rearranged and, and rewritten a lot of the music. So it's the original songs, but sort of really, um, yeah, rearranged to fit the, the, the music and the, uh, sorry, not fit the music, to fit the movie. So the points, you know, Mamma Mia, we know that's this sort of huge, hitting, happy song. And then you take the music out and let Lily sing it a cappella, and it's just a really beautiful, heartbreaking ballad that then turns into a, a real sort of, yeah, thumping, uh, feel-good song, yeah. I think the reason people are going to like it is because very much like filming it, it's this like a wonderful escape. We just basically had this amazing escapism to this incredible island and basically went off to our happy place where we filmed this for like two months. And I think the same thing happens when you watch the movie. It's You go away to this like happy, sunny, lovely place with ABBA music and uh, just get away from life for a while. I mean, this is the most epically spectacular thing I've ever seen. I feel, don't you feel like you're in Greece? I mean, the sun, it feels like, it's actually just kind of feel like a Grecian summer today. We filmed in Croatia on an island called Vis, which is a magical island, and I want people to go to it, and I don't want people to go to it because it's so incredible. Um, and actually, they've captured it really well tonight. I really, I've, I've been watching her and admiring her for her entire career as long as I've basically been able to watch movies and I find that it was already kind of within me so the research going back and watching her films and her TV shows wasn't even a job it was just the greatest joy and so I got to try on bits and pieces of her and some of it stuck in the film well the great thing about the prequel version of this story is you see exactly how the girls became the dynamos they graduated Oxford they all went after their own dreams and yet they were always there for each other when Donna needed them the most the girls came traveled to Greece and they put on their own show just to cheer each other up. The, the song I was most excited about was Mamma Mia. Uh, we shot that in two days and it was the most fun to choreograph and us girls had a smile on their face. We had the crew dancing and clapping and how can you not just have the best time dancing and singing to Mamma Mia if not any other song? I mean, Cher. I am most excited to see Cher. I think that I just want to see what she's wearing. I want to see her hair. I want to hear her voice. Uh, I just want to be around Cher as much as I can at this point. I think regardless of what fans think after they watch this film, they're going to walk out with a smile. Whether they've been touched or they've had tears emotionally or they've had so much joy, something is going to shift within them because this film is just so beautiful and we had the best time making it and I think it translates. This is a ridiculously exciting, thrilling night. I can't, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, it's brilliant. Look at it, look around. It's a blue red carpet. I've never seen that before. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the secret is. If, if, there, if I knew, I'd probably do a better job. But um, I think he's a fun-loving guy in real life and, and his part in, in, in this film. So I think it's just a question of embracing that sort of free-spiritedness and uh, having a sense of humor and a sense of play and adventure, really, yeah. Step, stepping onto the set and seeing Cher was just like, I mean, it was pretty star-studded already, to be honest. Uh, and then when Cher comes in and, and sort of ups the stakes, that's kind of, it's great. It's not every day that happens. And she's just a majestic queen, isn't she? So, thrilled to be in her presence. The character I play is uh, Bill, <coughs> excuse me, Bill in his past. So we see how we met Donna. Uh, and my character, he's, he's often in sailing around, uh, doing a sailing race. He's about to go on a sailing race, and that's when he meets her, and he gives Donna a lift on his boat. Um, so yeah. I was actually really excited about the song I get to sing in it, because I hadn't heard it before. Uh, and, and I think it's a, it's a banger, it's really cool. So uh, I was, that was, a, that was a, I loved doing that. It's called Why Did It Have To Be Me? And it's, yeah, it's pretty cool, it's pretty rocky. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was hard work, hate her. She's an awful, awful actress, nasty person, so uh, 
yeah, really didn't want to do it. No, I'm kidding. She, she was amazing. She was just a joy to work with. And uh, we were genuinely having a lot of fun the whole time. So, uh, yeah, pleasure. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's overwhelming the warmth and, and support and it's just, you know, the love for Mamma Mia. And I hope everyone will be, you know, I feel the challenge to me was to capture that spirit and that magic that not just from the show, but the first film. And now I think this one has done that. I didn't think we'd be in Hammersmith, but no, I, well, I'm thrilled it's London. It's the home, you know, it's the home run here. It's the first big audience. And no, it was there was no you know master plan at that point. So um, yeah, everything with Mamma Mia has a kind of organic process, and the time was right, I think. Well, that was the thing. I mean, the the interesting thing for those that love Mamma Mia and know it is that we've gone back in time to a backstory that we know from from the first film and how Donna Sheridan met those three men, how she went on her odyssey to Greece and her, with her friends. And then we go forward to nearly present day, and that has a huge appeal to me. And the idea that we call Godfather 2 came from Richard Curtis, who I happened to call and say, do you have an idea? Because it's very difficult to make something to make work with the songs and to bring back our wonderful original cast. So the fact that we could go back and forth in time was, I felt, you know, that was the moment. Oh, it, it's tough to cast the young versions because they have to be incredibly talented and step into huge shoes, really. But they were, they instantly kind of jumped out at us. You know, you have to be great at comedy. You have to be, you know, you have to sing great. Well, unlike, I, I, okay, I can, conf, I can confide to you. Say, Stellan, Pierce and Colin don't like dancing, but their younger selves had to be really good at it. <laughs> To me, the importance of the ABBA songs is always about the storytelling, about creating the, the stories, uh, the songs and the stories go together. So Knowing Me, Knowing You was obviously going to be very important as a breakup song. Um, what Meryl's going to sing was very important and a, a discussion with Meryl too. And, and then, of course, you know, out of, the, out of the park, Fernando with Cher, which actually is the one song we never managed to work into the show or the last film. Because the lyrics are slightly bonkers, but Old Parker, who wrote the script, made it work, and Cher certainly is, um, you know, to hear her singing that song, it was as if it was written for her, really. I think there's, a, there's something that certainly was quite innocent, but everyone can, I think, everyone, everyone hears those songs, everyone has them in their DNA. There's something kind of... They are little stories in themselves, but there's a sense of nostalgia, and that's what the movie is. We all want to be on that summer romance. We all want to go on that backpacking holiday, and we all want to sing those songs in the shower. So it was a kind of, I think they take, they're, they're, for me, there's one for every occasion. <laughs> Oh, it's all a bit wild. I don't know. I'm having. I'm just like overwhelmed. Um. So basically, you snap back and you see um, a young Donna living her life and meeting these guys, and you basically begin to understand um, just the relationships that she had with these three incredible men and how she ends up on the island. Oh my God, I, I have no idea. I do know that I I had the most incredible opportunity to like study her and watch her and and gain from the most sensational character that she created of Donna Sheridan and I just tried to capture even an essence of what she did and hope that you know people would believe that my Donna would grow into such a magnificent woman. It's overwhelming and it's <laughs> It's really unbelievable because we never thought 10 years later we'd, we'd be back. And I think the world needs Mamma Mia more than ever. Oh, I think it's ABBA, you know, it's, it's the music. There's something about the, the music that's so enlivening. And it's about summer and falling in love and losing love and 
never losing love. <laughs> It was fantastic. And you know, we, we did the recording in the same little uh, chapel. There's a recording studio, I think, near Hampstead, where we recorded the original. And uh, we went right back in and did the, did the second version, and it felt like, oh, I don't know, it felt like a gift. It feels appropriate. <laughs> I'm feeling slightly excited, mainly terrified. I think what was it not about Mamma Mia that made me want to do it? Everything. It was just an enormous opportunity to play in this sandpit with this amazing music we're listening to now, to work with these extraordinary actors, to have a wonderful summer, to try and give everyone else a wonderful summer. These are dark times, we need some joy. If I can do that or help do that, that'd be amazing. Everything about it was just an immediate yes, easiest thing in the world. It was a challenging film to write, try and give everyone their due, try and give everyone their part. But, you know, that, that, that challenge is the thrill. If you can pull that off, that's exciting. I mean, I tried to view it as a gift. I had these 16 extraordinary actors, and I just, the struggle is trying to give them enough to do. But they were all so great. They all mucked in. They all came in on days where they weren't working and watched everybody else. So we just had a hoot. They were my favorite ABBA songs and you needed to go in. I always knew Fernando would be in there. I couldn't find a way how, so I invented Andy Garcia's character just so that he could have the song sung to him. It's an enormous piece of reverse engineering. So, but yeah, I mean, the classics are going to be there. You can't do it without Dancing Queen. You can't have Mamma Mia without Mamma Mia. And other ones were just the ones that I loved. They let me, ABBA let me choose whichever I wanted, so they were great. It was a very tricky film to make, and if I, I just got the gig as a writer, if I'd known I was going to be directing it, I would never have written a dance sequence on 14 boats. I thought it would be someone else's problem, but um, when you get there, th that's the fun, that's the thrill. So no, we had a, we had a time. Hilarious. It, to let directing Cher is nothing but a pleasure. You think it's going to be terrifying because she's Cher, and then she's the nicest, warmest, sweetest person. So we just had a laugh, we had a hoot, it was great. You'll meet her, she's great. I remember walking out of the first one thinking that I just had a summer holiday in two hours. So if we can do that with this one, then we'll have done something right. It's nice, and it's nice to be here, not alone, but with a wonderful uh, bunch of actors that I've had so much fun with. They didn't trust me to carry it all on my own, so they brought in a younger and fresher person to play me as young. No, it's, uh, I mean, it's the same character, it's the same island, and it's the same people, but it's just more fun. We've been waiting for 10 years, and, uh, and it was, they were very smart, because no, we did, nobody wanted to do one just to, because to sort of profit, uh, for the profit, or the money. So they had to have an idea. They had an idea when they called and said, would you like to come again? I just say, yeah, yeah, if everybody else is coming, I'll come without reading the script even, because it's, uh, it's such a fun bunch of people to hang with. So. Oh, it's wonderful, but it was like 10 years hadn't passed at all. I mean, we, we just continued where we left off. It was incredibly easy to continue. <laughs> You know I can't sing, so I'm not really excited about anything, but I happily I don't sing much in this one, so so the humiliation is much less. More. They can expect more than the first one, yeah. This is like being at a, a, a definite party. I think people are ready to celebrate and very excited to have this movie back again and with our cast that is reunited and then new people that have been added to the family. I think it's really, uh, it's a celebration. It's a sing-along and everybody knows the words. Yes, it's so true. That's so true. I, I think, first of all, I think it's a multi-generational story. And then I think it's, everybody has that sense of traveling when they're young and meeting people that change their lives and that it's just it takes place in the most beautiful country in the world yes greece sorry well put <laughs> the hits that they loved the first time and the hits they didn't get the last time how about that yeah.